Hello, I'm Couch Coop and welcome to another five more PS4 couch co-op and split screen games. This is number 25. If you've noticed, I've put them all by episode. Actually, before we start this, something I just want to talk to you guys about quickly. No, I'm not going to talk you through how to shave your ball bag. I am going to show you the numbers for the couch co-op material recently over the last six seven months it's waned like 10 percent of my audience only watch my couch co-op five more videos now it used to be huge the numbers so let me know is it something you guys are moving away from have you not seen the videos i've listed them all and made a new playlist so come back to me so let's start with number five for episode 25 and it is destroy all humans 2 from pandemic who have long gone they made the original star wars battlefront game which was so good on that system really well looked after couch co-op developer they're awesome with their content and they made the sequel to destroy all humans the original split screen imagine doing that nowadays it's a crazy idea and it's a crazy freaking game I'm pretty sure we finished this scene, all right? We finished it right the way through. I don't know if we did the whole thing in split screen. I remember when you go into the spaceship, the UFO, it's dual controls because you can shoot t cars and tanks and abduct people from the UFO. This is an amazing game. Looks absolutely terrible, but what doesn't nowadays, right? <laughs> Hey there, uh, moon doggy. When they remastered the original, so there's three copies of the game. The original, which is the straight port, which looks absolutely dire. This, which is a straight port, which again, isn't any bells and whistles by any stretch of the imagination. But then the original's been remade last year, completely remastered. Not rebuilt, but its textures are updated. It does look very good, and I probably will go to it. Watch where you are going. If you saw what some of the big name reviewers said about the remake of the original, who had never played or knew about any of the Destroy All Humans series, the first thing they were talking about was the amazing humour in the dialogue. It's absolutely awesome. All of the voice acting is amazing. The humour is bigger than this game itself, and that's half the reason to play it. The writing and the audio has not suffered on age. It is absolutely stellar. Compared to the first one, it's a little bit more detailed on what you can do when you take over people's bodies or what you can get people to do. There's even like calling the police emergency system down and taking over particular people to do particular missions. It's really deep on that front. It kind of leans away from the out and out murdering and destruction that we saw in the first one. And the anal probe weapon, which was one of the funniest in-game weapons on earth. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for a game called Colossus Down, which is indie and on the store. For this month, it's very new. It came out on the new releases tab, that's how I found it. And you might recognize this art style and this developer. They are quite big on the indie scene, especially on the Xbox Live scene a while back and currently. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. A little bit annoying that I didn't have room for it in my previous beat-em-up video, but it's okay in areas and it's quite strong on story and text which was knocked me on my ass a little bit because I'm not used to that sort of stuff and on some quite adult content it's to do with a pig being reborn through the blood of um I can't work out if it's pro or anti-vegetarian it's quite complicated for a, a side scroller It is standard stuff with the controls up to a certain point. You do actually have to have a cooldown. There's a cooldown button where this meter builds up. If you do too much, you fire too much, or you hit something a lot, it, you start to get too hot, and then you have to push a button to release that pressure to get the meter down. It's a bit weird, and you have a projectile weapon. The robot has a bouncy electric weapon, and the giant bleeding pig has all manner of weird purple stuff. It's very off the wall. It feels like Castle Crashers a lot, and it's got that 2D, 3D slanted playing field, but it's very hectic, and it's got quite a lot of R-rated gore in it for a cartoon game. It doesn't hold back with who you dismember and how you go about dismembering them. There's like people getting killed outside of their homes all the time, and the protagonist is not quite sane, neither is her sidekick. It's all up in the air, but it does kind of work. It looks and sounds pretty good.
is a between level like power up screen look at the dialogue having to go past here like we're both pushing x for what seemed like 15 minutes i've put this on times eight it's crazy this is for one power up each and the power up is not like rocket science at all i'm thinking why are you talking to him like a child and then showing me all this gore none of it really makes sense to me but it does feel like a game that's had some care put into it. And I think there's a lot of depth here. With those power-ups being, you know, slightly different to what character you are and what one you choose to take. Where would I have put it on that top beat-em-ups list? Well, it would have gone in at the edge. It wouldn't be in the top three by any stretch. But it's certainly not a weak side-scrolling beat-em-up. And the fact that it's new and couch co-op off the bat is really cool when recognised. And the second character is not an afterthought. This pig has got some really weird shit going on, especially with its specials and its like little purple piglets that it can spawn out. Some crazy stuff. Colossus Down is definitely worth a look. Yes, as the name suggests, it is a diehard roguelike. And also, as the music suggests, this sort of weird, shriny, almost Buddhist humming is reminiscent of Scourgebringer, which is also a suicide-inducingly difficult roguelike. This one's very arty. It's very, like, vibrant. It reminds me of some of the felt artwork I used to do at middle school. It's got these lovely colours and mechanics that become very familiar very quickly. You've got a little like squirty jump and then you've got a boost on R2 and you've got weapons and different perks and pickups that you have to find again after you die, which is quite fun. It's not monstrously difficult and to tell you the truth, it does really well with disguising its secret mechanics. You do have like a death counter on what you've killed build up in the bottom left and you do have to get strange boss killed when you die. After you die, you get the opportunity to like shoot at this green sky. It's going in so many directions all the time that trying to work out what this game is trying to tell you is a little bit difficult, but its bedrock is that it's a great two-player platform roguelike that's got some awesome art to it. The newest thing to its mechanic convolution I can compare it to, and almost visually sometimes, is that game called Rain that was done by the Adult Swim people that kind of blew my mind on how much was hidden and how little they gave you at the beginning. You just really had to keep pushing for the game to start talking to you about what you're supposed to be doing. With this it's a lot more clearer and I do love the enemy design and there's a full blown underwater level. It's like whoa, anti gravity, let's have it. There was also a game called Undertow, which was on Xbox Live, which kind of had this mechanic as well. This is recommended to partners or couples or mates who know what a roguelike is all about and do want to spend time unwrapping that onion with the mechanics and layering those perks every time you die, things get more interesting. New bosses, re-rolls, there's a lot of procedural here. I've never seen the same map layout twice and it just sounds so tranquil. <laughs> It is also quite new and currently on the store. Never played the first one, but I recommend this if you're into the genre and are seeing what you like. Oh my god, Project Starship X. Project, when you go to the tutorial menu and look up what the buttons are on this game, it goes to, what are you reading this for? Start playing the game and work it out. And this is probably the first time I've put from the get-go uncut footage of our first playthrough of this game and you can see that we have to work it all out. I'll tell you how it works. It is a one, there's a one button dodge that only pushes you forward and you can't dodge back, but you have to collect things with the dodge and you have to be shooting stuff at the same time. The seizure warning is not toothless. It's also a roguelike. Can you believe it? The, whoever made this is onto a good thing here. The noise of it, the sound of your dodge recharging so you get pinged when it's you can't spam the dodge. And then sometimes it's like you need to chain up the dodges and then it will just be like, no, I'm going crazy now. You've got no, a white screen, no chance. It's, it, is, it is brilliant.
but it is niche. When I was doing the review and when I was doing the replays, I had this one in the background on the TV, I had the title script and the music got to me within minutes. But when you're playing it, just like with all annoying stuff, when you're in the middle of it, you'd have no idea about how obnoxious it's sounding because you are in the middle of this. It is totally amazing. It must be so good on a handheld, I think. It's also currently under discount and very, very new. I've got into this on the one player level. Having two people in it is just blinding because you are worrying about what, you don't know who you are sometimes and then it, it kind of throws up a different set of obstacles to two people as well which requires a lot of communication and you'll notice that the aspect ratio is not exactly massive. So when the big bosses come on screen and there's you, it just goes mental. <laughs> on the fly power-ups just like any roguelike and there's also a choice of character and it switched on me when I was playing the one player and put me on the ground so I was jumping instead of doing the dodge move which worked extremely well there was like gaps coming up and I also chose a different character who had a different looking ship no major stat difference though so I am so interested in this game I'm gonna keep playing this on the one player because of its roguelike like capabilities will keep me coming back to it so far i haven't seen too much re-rolling on the bosses but i have seen loads of difference on the obstacles in the missions leading up to said bosses and i've seen loads of weird secret avenues that you take that go into this like weird dream thing and it, and it goes it's go crazy and then if it, you know and the voice sample it says get good at the end of your level judgment in this funny it goes get good like in this funny robot voice it's it's genius <laughs> If you've got someone that you want to drag in on this game, think about that long and hard because unless they're a fan of this genre, they ain't gonna make it. If, however, you're a fan of the indie genre and shoot 'em ups and roguelike, this is the first roguelike shoot 'em up I've ever come across, and this is totally a green light. It is gonna be a staple on my sort of indie calendar. I think it's it's got an adorable look, sound, and feel, and you can tell that the more characters you get open and some of the boss designs, the trailer for the game has got some madness on it. I fought a giant crab on it last night. Project Starship X, ladies and gentlemen. And this episode's winner is Pang Adventures. Brand new on the store, old Coop's been busy. Oh, childhood, childhood memories. This Bubble Bobble, Snow Brothers, it was a fave. On my Spectrum, I think I had it on, my Mega 500 as well. Damn it, looked awful back then. This is, this is the promised land, people. It's not often we get a remake slash remaster of a classic that's put some really awesome modern twists in it, including the freaking milligun, I shit you not. It is a flawless remake, especially with some of the power-ups, both original and additional. And also, I love the way it sounds and looks. When it loaded up, I was like, oh my God, this is looking really PS3, you know, with the UI systems and some of those really crisp edges and vibrant colors. I was thinking this is gonna be dated. Oh man, it's, it's got revive system, Call of Duty vibes going on here. Funny because Pang's got this rhythm. I remember playing it on the original systems and it's got like, you, you have to sort of lean into it. I, so when I sat down and played this first, I was like, <laughs> bring it on, whatever. Died level one almost immediately. And it was a sit up in the chair moment and I just thought, holy shit, this is, this is not mucking about. And it, and it does not, man. It gets really, you start after thinking about those blocks disappearing and how you're gonna release the balloons. There's also a massive time penalty and huge bonuses to be had for doing things properly, not taking hits, all that stuff. Is there any deeper action RPG elements to it? No, it's purely an arcade game. You don't need to have another profile saved or anything like that. And you can go online with it, which is really good news. But you know what I was thinking? I was like, ah, oh, do you know what I'd really love? 
like, I don't know, a boss, maybe some mini maps, that sort of stuff. Oh my god! So it can do no wrong. It is absolutely bowled me over. Everybody loves it. It's difficulty is perfectly pitched. It does push back in all the right places. I love the art, the music. It's modern twist on a fantastically awesome ancient formula known as Pang. As we're going to say goodbye, do not forget to like and subscribe and check out my new episode format. Of course, I'll keep you all posted on any new cyberpunk content. And as always, see you there!